So what's happened is on the internet, we have basically said, all right, we don't own our identities. We're going to punt all of this to Zuckerberg and the like, right? That's what we've said, number one. It's like Google and Zuck and a few handful of others own our identities, which is crazy, number one. And number two, we're going to constrain the definition of identity, where it's going to just be how you log in to a social network, or it's just going to be your email address, or it's just going to be how you DM someone, and that is identity on the internet. And we just think that's kind of dumb. I mean, I think I think there's a lot of opportunities here to expand uh, what internet identity means and, and make it more human. You know, make it something that we're all accustomed to being, you know, human beings and understanding what identity is in the real world. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Monero.com Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on iOS and Android too. Monero.com wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. And by IVPN. Resist online surveillance with IVPN, a privacy-focused audited and transparent VPN provider that accepts Monero directly. Monero.com wallet and IVPN are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever. By typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Monero.com or Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Vic Sharma of CakeWalletMonero.com and Naveen Jain, co founder of Yat, about Yat integration into Cake Wallet. Vic and Naveen join Doug to discuss what YATs are and how Unicode standard emojis can be used to tell stories, establish self-sovereign online identities, and communicate group identities. They touch on the notion of flexing digital assets, whether or not YATs are NFTs, where Tari fits in, and they pick the winner of the YAT Privacy Contest Monero giveaway. Monero Talk starts now. All right, what's going on, guys? How you doing, Doug? Doug, man, how are you? <laughs> good, the good. voice of Monero. The voice uh, of Monero. <laughs> yeah. The voice and the face. But, yeah, but you're the guy behind the guy. And Naveen, I don't know who Naveen is in Monero. He's, uh, I don't even know. For all I know, he's Monero Mill. He could be. <laughs> Monero could Mill. Be. Uh, that, that's, those are big shoes to fill. I'm not Monero Moo. <laughs> if you are Monero Moo, stop giving me such a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess we should quickly explain. So we're going to do a, we're going to do a contest today, right? We're going to, we're going to go over the, the yats. First, let's explain the what, what the hell is a yat for those. There might be those in the Monero community that have not even come across a yat yet. Naveen, yeah, uh, yeah, yachts are dope. Yachts are self-sovereign identities, um, where instead of being known as a string of alphanumeric characters, you're known as a string of Unicode standard emoji. So the idea is um, that you can tell these incredible stories with emojis that you actually can't easily tell with alphanumeric characters, or, or if you could, it'd just take like a lot of them in order to tell the story. Um, and yeah, it's a really special because emojis are a universal language. So if you think about it, you know, there's, there's 5 billion interconnected people on this planet and they all are generally using the same Unicode standard emojis. So if your username, if you will, if your identity is a string of emojis, then all of a sudden it's a universal thing that everyone in the world can understand. And people love emojis. I mean, you know, the vast majority of online internet users are using emojis every single day of their lives. So it's something that people are passionate about. They're really fun. They're really expressive. You, you can do really cool things. Like you'd be known as like fire dragon or, you know, I love whatever or whatever, just like within a couple characters, you can tell these wild stories about yourself and really express yourself in beautiful ways. So that's what a yad is. 
Vic, can I tell Naveen that I actually invented Yat like 10 years ago? Can... <laughs> did, did, did you, you see that? Him. You just told him. <laughs> <laughs> so he's coming. Really? Can, you can, I, can, I play, can I play a horrible video for you guys? We, we could um we could Sorry. edit this out of need be, but uh, I just got to show you this. <laughs> Even more horrible than this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here it is. This is uh, April 2010, I guess, is when I upload this. Public Patch is a gateway between the real and virtual worlds of its members. Someone who views a Public Patch member wearing a patch in the physical world can search the patch directory online and find that member's Public Patch page. Direct messages. Wow. And learn more about them by connecting to any of the members' posted links, such as their Facebook page, Twitter, LinkedIn page, Second Life profile, MySpace page, YouTube channel, blog page, or any other web address. Public Patch makes fashion more functional, allowing anyone to essentially wear their true Look, image he's wearing a black the dragon, just like you said. Creating a link oh my gosh, look at this. In the physical world and their online world through their patched clothes, I love it. Accessories and even tattoos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> to join the patch directory, select and register a unique patch from the Get Patched page. Patch and purchase apparel like a shirt or hoodie. Edit your public patch profile. Post your links. Add a message. And then hit the streets. If you see someone wearing a patch and you want to look them up, Go to the patch directory and enter the color of the patch, the patch symbol. All right, you get the idea. You get the idea. Yeah, I mean, that's really cool. I How mean, funny is that? Yeah, I mean, I, clearly, you know, this is the the conversation we should be having, Doug, because you cl completely get what we're trying to do with Yeah, yeah man, I get yeah. Yeah, and then the, the goal here is that YATS um, operates sort of like a DNS. You know, you can associate... Uh, a, a wide range of different types of metadata with a YAT, for example, a Monero address or a website URL or other kinds of things. And YATs are pay once, own forever. So one of the key differences between a YAT and um, you know, perhaps a, a domain or other types of, of products on the internet is that you pay once and you own it. You don't have to rent it every year for the rest of your life. Um, and YATs are really inexpensive. So they start at only $4 uh, USD equivalent. And so you can create as many YATs as you want. Um, they all start their life as completely blank slates. So from a privacy standpoint, that's really important. You can create a YAT uh, and then you could associate with, for example, a Monero address. And if you don't associate with anything else, then that's all anyone would ever know about that particular YAT and about you as a user. So the idea is that we want to create a, a world that is that has sort of the, the, the privacy that the user wants at the end of the day, because you could also easily create a YAT where you associate all of your things with it, including public personal information oriented things. And then, you know, someone can use the YAT to essentially know who you are. So we wanted to create a wide range of possibilities in terms of privacy. Um, but it's very important to us that every single YAT starts its life as a completely blank slate. Awesome, y'all. I think the, one of the, the genius aspects to it is the fact that you guys are using emojis, right? So when, when we attempted, uh, you know, version one of this idea many years yeah. ago, uh, emojis, I don't think emoji keyboards even existed yet. This was like, if you saw in the video, I was showing like yeah. a Blackberry, people weren't even using iPhones yet. But the emoji is really what makes this work because obviously everybody emojis all the time. We're communicating with emojis via text. So it it is kind of conceivable that people can start, you know, thinking a little bit in, in terms of emoji and uh, more e easily and naturally, uh, you know, associate addresses with with images so yeah yeah. I, yeah and also the other thing like emojis themselves right i mean how does that work are they copyright protected are they like yeah, yeah that's obviously you guys are able to do that so how, how's that working yeah so if you think about an emoji there are two components to an emoji there's the actual underlying unicode um, of the emoji and then there is the image 
that your you know computer uses and, and renders when it encounters this Unicode out there in the world. Uh, and you're right that uh, emoji designs are actually copyrighted uh, by major device manufacturers, for example. So Apple has a very famous set of emoji. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but the original inventor of emoji was actually SoftBank. Uh, so SoftBank is the original creator of emoji, and then it was actually popularized in Japan by NTT Docomo. So they have their own sets of emoji. Facebook has their own set of emoji. Twitter has a set of emoji. Microsoft has a set of emoji. So lots of different sets of emoji out there. And the way that YAT works is a YAT is essentially a string of Unicode. And uh, depending on the device that you're using, um, it will be rendered, you know, that Unicode will be rendered using the that device's uh, particular emoji set. And then what we've done for YAT and YAT creators is we've actually designed our own emoji set. And when you create a YAT, you actually get the rights uh, to use the artwork for your emoji in any way you desire. So if you want to put your, um, your YAT on a T-shirt, you want to create a T-shirt line, you want to create a brand out of it in some way, shape, or form, you're able to do that without paying us royalties or having to worry about um, other people's emoji sets. So we really tried to be thoughtful and intentional with regards to how we created YAT and how we set it up for, for people who have YATs. Awesome. And uh, right, Vic, I want to go to you in one second with one other question. So are, are, are they essentially NFTs or will they be NFTs at some point once you guys try to decentralize this? Yeah, yeah. So uh, as you know, YAD is a, is a product of, of Tari Labs. And so uh, our goal is we ultimately want YATs to be first class citizens on Tari. So they become essentially digital assets and uh, essentially a, a, a first class type of address um, on sort of Tari, on the Tari network when Tari finally hits mainnet. Um, so that's sort of the goal. And at that point, yeah, they would be very much like a, an NFT, if you will, issued on Tari. Uh, that will be the core source of truth for, for YATs in the future. Um, so yeah, that's the goal. Today, you can mint YATs on Ethereum, but they're essentially proxy assets when they're minted on Ethereum. Uh, because the source of truth is still essentially YAT today. Uh, and then ultimately, the source of truth will migrate to Tari once we have Tari out there in the world uh, in a mainnet fashion. Awesome. Yeah. Vic, how'd you get pulled hey. into this? How'd I get pulled into this? I don't know. Naveen Sweet talked me into this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think... He's, uh, talker. he's a sweet talker. He's got he me is all a sweet talker. Out he's... he's... Yeah. Always sell him. Yeah. Um, I would be closing, Vic. I learned that from you, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Doug, uh, with with Cake Wallet, I mean, you've been in, well, involved in this journey from day one. You know, at, at some point, I had an epiphany that wallets are the thing for blockchain, right? I mean, blockchain is sitting there by itself. What are you going to do with it, right? You need a wallet to interact with it, right? You need. That's how you're going to read it. That's how you're going to write to it. That's how you're going to manipulate it. So, and that's why, you know, Cake was born. But I wanted to go a step further and make it very, very user-friendly. You know, just anyone can pick it up and just use it right away. And I think we've succeeded in that. Um, and with YATS, I, I think that takes it definitely a, a step further. You know, right now people are seeing the 64 character or whatever, how long character for addresses. You know, you go into your, uh, even in Cake Wallet, if you go into your private keys and all that, you see all these letters and numbers, you're like, what the hell am I going to do with this? So that's why I like what I like about YATS. You know, it makes it friendly, approachable, easy to memorize, easy to know, number, and also have your own identity. So with everything we wanted to do with Cake Wallet and with everything Naveen's doing with YAT, I think it fits perfectly, perfectly together for that user experience. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, so we, we tried yeah. it out. We have uh, we have the free speech money yet. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah. So we we we've gotten so we put it out. You know, we, we sometimes we show it on the bottom of the on the videos, and we say you know send a tip here. Um, it's I think it's I think it's working. We got we got we got we got a few tips. But Vic, do you have? Is there any way of having like? Do you have data on how often people are typing yats into an address? Do you know that or no? We wouldn't know that. I mean, even if we could do that, we're not collecting that data. Um, I mean, if that's pinging 
uh, the yacht server or whatever yeah, it is there. Yeah, maybe the maybe they have that data. How many times are you getting paid? Like, is are people using it yet for these purposes or uh, too early? That's that's what this show is all about. We got to get the word out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so there definitely are people who are using yacht out there for sure. It is still early. Um, it's it's a new technology, so I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that there's like you know, a billion users of yet. That's not true to yet, you know. But eventually, uh, eventually, we we hope that to be true one day. Uh, so it is definitely early days, and uh, it's a great opportunity to try something brand new that you know we think has incre incredible potential in terms of a future form of identity on the internet. Right, that's what I like about it, Naveen. I mean, it just goes beyond what we're using it in Cake, for example, just for you know address resolution and, and giving a simple address to people. I like I like the fact that you're making it into an identity, an online identity. That's I think that's fantastic. Um, if you can link that to your t Instagram, Facebook, yeah. and all that, that's going to be even better. Yeah, I mean, our our view is that um, you know as the internet uh, was originally developed and has evolved over time. We, we tend to think of our internet identities as just our email addresses or our usernames um, that we use to log into primarily FANG products, right? Like that's basically what people do most of the time with their, uh, their inter internet identities. And it's really crazy because they don't own them. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, Doug, but there was a really hilarious article. I think it was in NPR. This is now like maybe a, a couple of years ago, <clears throat> but there was an article about uh, if you have your Facebook account and it got locked, how do you get it unlocked? And uh, the the punchline of the article was the best way to get your Facebook account unlocked is to go out and buy an Oculus Quest, because uh, the the I, I think they might have changed it recently, but uh, it used to be that. You had the prerequisite to using a, an Oculus Quest was you had to have a working Facebook account. So they had given the Oculus Quest customer service people sort of special access to unblock people's Facebook accounts. And so people were literally buying Oculus Quest, getting their Facebook accounts unlocked, and then returning the Quest. <laughs> They're like, I don't even care about Zuckerberg's like metaverse. I don't care about any of that. I just want my my Facebook account Facebook account unlocked. And so. This whole idea that we own our names and we own our reputations, IRL, but then for whatever reason on the internet, we don't own our identities is kind of a very strange, inhuman thing, if you think about it. Yeah. And then the second thing is, is that we think that there's so much more to the concept of internet identity. I mean, if you think about internet identity as it relates to digital assets that you own, issued on a digital asset protocol in the future, like something like Tari, for example, um, that's really, really interesting because you could argue that IRL, there's a lot of examples of people owning things and that being a core part of their identity. For example, say someone's really into sneakers, they're like a sneakerhead, and everyone knows that this person is a sneakerhead. Well, being a sneakerhead is clearly a part of their identity. I mean. There are people who are really into cars and there's like car clubs out there. People who just like go to car clubs, you know, on the weekend, right? Because they're really into cars. And it comes down to being able to show that you own something, right? So that's an element of identity that now is enabled by, you know, this sort of, you know, technology that we're all involved with together in this like crazy web three universe, right? Um, you know, the, the groups that you're in, for example, is also a form of identity. There used to be a guy I used to do business with, you'd walk into his office and the guy must have been, I don't know, in his like sixties or something. And you'd look at the wall and he had a plaque for his fraternity, you know, that he was in when he was in college and he's still associated with, he had friends still from the fraternity. He's now like a 60 plus year old dude. And this group, this social group is a part of his identity. So what's happened is on the internet, we basically said, all right, we don't own our identities. We're going to punt all of this to Zuckerberg and the like, right? That's what we've said, number one. It's like Google and Zuck and a few handful of others own our identities, which is crazy, number one. And number two, we're going to constrain the definition of identity where it's going to just be how you log in to a social network, or it's just going to be your email address, or it's just going to be how you DM someone. And that is 
identity on the internet. And we just think that's kind of dumb. I mean, I think I think there's a lot of opportunities here to expand uh, what internet identity means and, and make it more human, you know, make it something that we're all accustomed to being, you know, human beings and understanding what identity is in the real world. Right, right. And especially with regards to crypto addresses, which are, are so, you know, they're, they're, they're the opposite of like symbolic and expressive, right? They're like <laughs> this alphanumeric code that, that, that yeah. you can interpret nothing from. Right. So it's literally the polar opposite of that. Now you're, you're giving that, like you said, an identity. Yeah. Uh, and what's cool too is, you know, we're, we talked about how, you know, yeah, you could associate your Instagram with it or whatever, or you can, you know, use it to be completely anonymous, right? And 100%. Not, not connecting your real world identity to it, but right. connecting other things that you want to just associate with that yacht, whatever. Maybe it's this is your yacht that you use because you're associated, yeah, with some fraternity or right. that you're associated with, you know, Monero, right? Totally. Um, so, yeah, that, it's, it's great. Uh, yeah. What, what do you think will initially drive adoption? Who's like, who's the uh, the early user? Yeah, I mean, so look, we have lots of users of Yat on Twitter. We have lots of users of Yat uh, that use TikTok. We have uh, users of Yat that use Cake Wallet. Um, and so we're we're running a lot of experiments. You know, we're we're constantly evolving the platform um, and creating new opportunities for people to use their yats. So I don't have an answer for you like, okay, what is the the one thing that we're going to do that's going to make yat, you know, explode and everyone in the world is going to have yats. Um, but we're, we're constantly iterating and running experiments with the yat community um, to achieve that outcome. You know, we, we look at this as a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, it's one of those things because it's new technology. You know, it's not something that has really existed in this way before. At least we're not aware of it, except for what you showed us. Your your, your V one. Uh, yeah. I, I, filed, I filed a patent on that too, by the way. Uh, oh yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll share that with you too. Oh my god. This might be the next uh, Craig Wright. Uh, so this, this is why you wanted him on the Craig Wright. Of yes. It's called visual identifiers as links to access resources. It's it's pretty broad. We got some pretty broad Lovely. claims in there, but no, I, n I never I never got the patent though. Yeah, I, yeah, I can, no, hey, great. I, I mean, it's 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 a cool idea, and um, yeah, we're we're really excited about it. We're we're you know very very excited about where it's going to be uh, in the near future. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Should we should we do the yacht contest? Should we go through the yachts? Hell sure, yeah. <laughs> so want to explain what it was yeah yeah so I, I think it was the idea was people were to to try to compose a yat that uh, best expressed the concepts of privacy is that correct is that what we were right. telling people exactly right so we're gonna we're gonna pick two winners i'm gonna pick my top yat and vic is gonna pick his top yat i have i haven't seen these yats at all yet so this is, this is gonna be interesting <laughs> Okay, I'm supposed to go incognito for this part of the. the, the <laughs> no, Naveen, no, you, you so, stay uh, around. We're going to be incognito. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Go incognito. Can somebody uh, can somebody bring it up so so the viewers can see all of the yeah, yats? If you can bring it up. Okay, so here are the yats. Can you can you zoom in? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a lot of yats here, man. Oh my god. Okay. What, what, I, wonder what what the, I wonder what the first one is. Yeah. Exclamation, like, like look, don't, no don't walking or something. No yeah. footprints. Like, don't watch me, don't follow me or something? Don't follow me. Yeah, don't me. watch me move. Don't don't watch where I go. Like, Okay. Kind of like that. And the next one, uh, can't see moon. I don't know. Locked up moon. Locked up moon key. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's go to like, the next. Shh, be quiet. Like, this is uh, hush money. money. Hush money. <laughs> <laughs> Private money secured going up and locked. Yeah. Yes. What's that all about? What's with the going up and locked? Okay. I don't know. I like the next one. It's got cake in it. That's always good. <laughs> And they know what the, who they were trying to influence. <laughs> what is the what's the next emoji there? Chains? Chains, yeah. So okay. cake, blockchain, can't write. 
live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the yacht. That's the yacht logo. Oh, sorry, that's the yacht. Oh, okay, logo. okay, that's right. So that's a good one. Um, they got cake and yacht in there. They know what they're doing. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna look to see if any like <laughs> pop out at me. As Seven is good. Blockchain really. locked, right? Okay. Yes, yeah, so like secure or secure yeah, block, block private. Yeah, block yeah. chain secure. And the other one is next one is money secure, but I don't know what the little tiger thing is, a cat or whatever. Tiger money shield. Tiger private money. Tiger. Well, where, why tiger? Sorry, I'm not a meme private. expert. <laughs> they, you're not a meme. A meme They're open to interpretation. <laughs> I honestly like the first one the best so far. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, now that we figured out what it was, it makes sense. Yeah. I should have participated. Uh, so these so I mean these are yachts people actually bought bought already? No, these are just suggested they're, yachts. They're proposing them, yeah. Oh, okay, because I was thinking I'd say this person bought the anchor in fourteen, would they pay two hundred thousand for it? <laughs> <laughs> Can you uh, can you scroll it up? Scroll down a little further. Yeah, of course. Further? You know, let's see the next. Yeah, okay. All right. Mm, look. I have my pick already. Lucky. Honestly, I like the first one the best so far. Uh, title. What's with the the tidal wave tornado? Oh, boating accident. I like that one. I like that one. Where do you see that one? I like when, the boating where? accident. Lost my keys in a boating accident. 31. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> you should have ended with like, uh, you know, like where are my keys, you know? But uh, that, that might be my top. There, were there other attempts at uh, the boating accident? Okay, yeah. Scroll, scroll down further. I'm going to make that my top. 31 31 is good. I'm going to go with something boring. <laughs> C brain. All right. Uh, C brain free star. Did you guys see number 28? Number 28. Monero. Monero to the moon. Monero peace. Monero yeah, to the to the moon. Yeah, I think just Monero. It's just Monero. <laughs> it's just Monero, baby. Just Monero. <laughs> oh, I thought that was the yet sign. That's why. Uh, what's the one with the the eye and the brain? So like, like because it's privacy. Like saying like it maintains your freedom, or is that like mm. censorship? Or I don't know. Free your mind. I don't know. Free your mind, guys. Free your like, mind. Or like seeing what you're thinking. I don't know. Surveillance? Is that supposed to be like a surveillance thing? Surveillance. Maybe. Three stars. I don't know. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, my top is the boating accident. All right. Okay, so you're, you're voting so. for number 31. Yeah, I mean, right? are there any more? This is it, right? It goes up to 30. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going, for, I'm going with the boating accident, 31. All right. And then, Vic, what's yours? You know, initially I was going to go with 24, but... Um, but I think number one, I, I, once it's uh, been explained to me, I actually like that because it really um, exemplifies how Monero works. Uh, it, you know, you can't follow transactions. That's it. Each every transaction is new. I like it. So I go with one. All right. Those are incredible yachts, guys. <laughs> <laughs> really awesome yachts. So we got the boating, the famous boating accident, the, the historical boating accident that we're going to be talking about for generations. <laughs> That's Bogsley and Davis Jr. I'm going to run out and buy that yet before we uh, publish the video. <laughs> before you air the show? <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> totally. Try to buy it right now. Try to buy it right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's get it. This is how we get right, people cool. going, right? You got to get, get the FOMO on the yachts. That's the whole, that's the whole thing. Hey, what, each person wins uh, one Monero or two Monero? Oh, nice. That's uh, two, two, two Monero. Nice. Two Monero each? Wow. Two Monero each. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great prize. So congrats, guys. Who are the now, winners? Doug, say, say the name or Naveen, say their names. 
Yeah, so uh, the first one um, is their Twitter handle is Kerberos23. And uh, the other one is Bobo McGee 420. <laughs> nice. Bobo McGee. Go, Bobo. Bobo got yeah, some hey, Maybe I'll have them on Monerotopia. We'll have a whole, you know, what did you do with your two Monero? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Excellent. This is great. Yeah, thank you guys so much for doing this and uh, really, really appreciate it, Doug. Thank you so much for having us. It's really, really fun. And Vic, we're so honored and excited to uh, have Yat integrated with Cake. You know, thank you so much Likewise. for supporting Yat uh, and the Yat community. It really means the world to us and so hyped to uh, make this super successful with you guys and the Monero community. I guess, Excellent. is there anything Excellent. anything else you guys want to announce or bring up as what's coming down the pipe? Any with regards to Yat and Cake? Vic, you want well, to go first? Like, what's what's coming up with Cake? Well, I mean, with Cake, we just put out two new very cool features, uh, which we're really proud of, and it's been very successful. One is the gift cards uh, that you can buy with oh, yeah. Monero. You know, Cake Pay, we call it Cake Pay. You can buy with Monero, Bitcoin, Litecoin. It's been uh, it's been really popular. That's been that's been doing really well. I think the cool thing about that is you can buy an exact amount, which I think is pretty neat. So you don't have to buy gift card in batches of fifty dollars, hundred dollars. You can, let's say your bill is a uh, your Chipotle and it's forty nine dollars and thirty eight cents. You can buy a gift card for forty nine dollars thirty eight cents. So that's pretty cool, and you get discounts. You get one to three percent discounts on everything. So pretty excited about that. Um, Another feature we put out was on the exchange site. Uh, we, we built an auto rate selector. So right now we're using change now, side shift, and simple swap. So when you initiate a ch uh, trade now in Cake Wallet, it'll pull the best rate for you from the three suppliers, the three providers, and you're gonna get better rates uh, when you use the exchange in Cake Wallet. So rather than going hunting from different uh, providers, we'll do that for you in Cake Wallet. And immediately you get good rates and you can do the trade. And that's also been very successful. We've seen volumes go up. So I think people are enjoying that. So what's coming down? Uh, you know me, I don't like to pre-announce. Uh, I mean, what's those, coming are two, up. those are two major things. And they you basically, yeah. the, the rate selector, I, I think you just announced like two days ago, right? Yeah, it was in the last update, like uh, yeah. Yeah, last week, last Thursday or something. So. And the, the yeah, gift card been, thing is huge really because it means oh, yeah. you can use Monero to basically buy almost anything. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. And being and able to say do it's exact cheaper. amounts, yeah. that's a huge deal. Yeah. And we say it's cheaper than using cash because you get those discounts. For sure. Yeah. That's super so dope. That's... But I, the exact amounts thing is a big deal because, you know, as you know, one of the big things in the gift card industry is breakage, you know, so people yeah. have extra money left on a gift card, they forget about it, you know, whatever. But in this case, exactly. you can literally make it precise. It's, as you said, oh, I'm going to spend $37.65, and you can just get that gift card using Monero. That's yep. huge. That's a huge yep. deal. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's, a good, it's, a, it's a good off ramp for Monero, you know, which, which people have trouble doing with Monero. Yeah, it really closes the loop. Because, I mean, the biggest question I always get when I try to get somebody into Monero, if I'm trying to get them to accept a tip or whatever, I'm trying to get them to accept Monero in exchange for, exchange for cash, is, all right, well, now what Now what do I do with it, right? And, like, so never never had a really good answer. Like, it was always like, well, you know, you could go on local Monero and you could sell it or you find somebody else that's selling something for Monero, like, which right. is possible, but like they have to be really, you know, motivated. But now it can just be like, you know, swipe yeah. left and you can instantly buy, spend your Monero pretty much anywhere. And the, yeah. the thing is you could, you can essentially purchase the gift cards anonymously, right? Because you're just using an email address. Email address, make, exactly. Yeah. There's right. no KYC when you make the, the purchase of the right. gift card. Exactly. And you can buy multiple cards. You can, you know, I don't, I don't want to say, but you can use multiple addresses or you can do things. Um, say, say it in Yat form, Vic, for me. What, what, what would the <laughs> Yat for cake pay? It'd be the cake plus like a gift card symbol or yeah, something. Yeah, we, we have a gift. We have a gift emoji. It'd be cake gift. 
you yeah, know, there cake, we go. gift, private cake, private money, gift. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Amazing. And Naveen, any, anything else you want to, you want to mention or bring up that might be coming down the, the pipe? Yeah, we have um, some really cool features we're adding to Yat um, around enabling people to uh, celebrate and flex um, their wide range of digital assets uh, that they own. So think about things like NFTs and, and ways to really flex them in, in, in ways that you know currently most people wouldn't even think about. Um, so for example, we invented this thing called liquid identity where you can have, um, multiple, uh, NFTs essentially as your profile pick at once. And the way we did that is, uh, we set everything up on essentially a three dimensional cube. So each face of the cube, you can have a different NFT, uh, and therefore you can have now multiple profile picks, uh, at the same time, because each NFT may represent a community you're a part of, it may represent you know, uh, an aesthetic you're passionate about or, a, or something else. Maybe it's, there's a designer who you're really passionate about or, or a game developer you're, you're really passionate about. So this enables you to show up multiple dimensions of your identity uh, in one go. And then we have a feature that is in beta right now that we call Yat Pod. So um, one of the things that we're really trying to enable people to do with their Yats is uh, communicate social groups that they're a part of as a part of their identity. So growing up, you know, I used to collect baseball cards and uh, that was like a really big deal for me as a kid. And I had binders and binders and binders of these baseball cards. And one of the things mm -hmm. I loved to do, I had a really close knit friend group where we would all uh, hang out together at, you know, someone's house. Uh, everyone would bring their binders over. We'd all lay on the carpet, spread all the binders out and kind of have fun exploring each other's collections and trading and breaking packs. And it was just a ball. It was just super duper fun. And to me, that's one of the most fun things that people can now do on the internet with digital assets. And, you know, we're really, really excited about this possibility as it relates to Tari. So we really want to model behaviors that we know people have in the real world and sort of bring them online um, in, in, in a new way through Yat. So Yat Pods is something that's in beta now. Liquid Identity is actually um, also in beta uh, as, as, as we're speaking now. And those are two features that we're really, really excited about uh, and, and really hopeful that the Yat community loves. So uh, yeah, those are, those are two things we're excited about. Cool, cool. Now, perhaps a silly question, but can people use Monero to purchase, purchase a Yat? Is that... Yeah, so uh, the answer is uh, sort of. Oh, no. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, right away. Um, Vic, but... I had a gift card to Yat. Yeah. I know. Um, that's always asking we, the hard questions we, here. Yeah. We have found ways historically, you know, obviously, as everyone knows, you know, uh, my, my co-founder is, is Fluffy Pony uh, for Tari Labs and that's... for Yat. So we're very passionate about Monero, and we're huge, huge supporters of Monero, um, you know, uh, from end to end. And so uh, what I'll say is if someone is interested in acquiring a yacht using Monero, um, just just get in touch with us, you know, like let us know. We're, we're happy to work with you and, and, and find a way to make it work um, because we, we want obviously people to be able to spend Monero. Um, Monero is money and uh, it is default private money, as we all know, and we're pa very passionate about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely uh, add a way to do that. Um, where is can, we, can I ask? Where's Tari in the in the general general scheme of things? When when can we expect a decentralized version of, of Yat? Like just a basic time frame in the in the most general sense. Yeah. Um, so the the classic answer is soon. <laughs> um, but what I'll say is that we've made really incredible progress. I, I just want to give a huge shout out to all of the contributors and all the developers um, who are contributing to the development of Tari. It's not an easy thing uh, to build because we really don't view this as sort of a classic crypto get rich quick scheme. We really are working our butts off to create something that is impactful and, and intentional and meaningfully valuable to hopefully millions and millions of people one day. Um, and so, what I'll say is Tari's been in testnet now for well over a year. 
Um, and if anyone checks out the, the GitHub repos related to Tari, they'll see um, a hive of activity. I mean, they'll see so much development of act activity and, and anyone can follow along. You know, uh, everything is essentially done out in the open. Um, it, it's been that way since day one. Uh, Tari is not a fork of anything. It's, it's sort of a, a brand new thing. It's a Mimblewimble implementation written in Rust and we're doing some really cool things uh, with regards to a, a second layer and supporting digital asset issuance. Um, so I would urge folks that are interested in Tari to visit Tari.com, come hang out with us on Telegram. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we very much love your feedback. Download a Tari, a Tari node, base node, and and start playing with the testnet. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, let's, let's run congrats to the winners. Thank you guys for both jumping on. Naveen, thanks for all the info. Yeah, Vic thank well. you so much, Doug, for having us and really, really appreciate it. And thank you, Vic. Uh, really, really appreciate you. Yeah, likewise, likewise. All right, guys, we'll be in touch. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.